$30,000 every single year is how much this automation is going to save your business. So here's how it works. As your business scales, we need a scalable support solution because at the moment you've got every single customer coming in and just emailing your support. They have you know questions that are very basic and very complex and every single person is just emailing your support system. And the problem we have is there's a no way of identifying higher priority uh, problems within the inbox here. We can create you know labels and things uh, and try and categorize the Gmail inbox slightly, but that still leaves a problem of our support team wasting time on very simple problems. So this is an example of somebody who I did actually, I did a little bit of work for looking at their customer service and seeing how we could actually solve this problem. Uh, and we built a tool that can do this. This is gonna cost you $30 a month. The link is down below. You get two weeks to try it for free and it does all of this for you. But basically the problem was 80% 80, 80 of the questions coming in to this inbox were just completely, they were just incredibly similar and very, very simple. So you've got people asking, you know, what's the price? How can I track my order? What's the minimum order quantity? What time do you open? Depending on what type of business business you've got, these are frequently asked questions. Uh, and that's why on our websites, we have these drop downs which allow people to get answers to those questions. But it's not very dynamic and it's hard for people to find and it's not particularly tailored to their problem. So it could be they could say, I am in this town or what time is the opening time or, you know, I am looking to buy this product. How many is the minimum order quantity? They want tailored solutions and tailored answers, which is why they email you. But you've now got to pay somebody's salary to respond to all of those questions. Uh, and most of the time they're just copying and pasting those responses. So you're wasting a lot of money here. The second part and the reason why we do this is because of these complex issues. Only 20% of these problems are complex problems. And these are things like refunds or my order never arrived or why am I being charged or where can I cancel my subscription? I want to make a personal booking. These sorts of things that are going to move the needle in your business. These are questions that people have that's either going to make them leave and go to a competitor, dispute or ask for a refund or leave a bad review. So these problems need to be handled quickly and these are very important. But the problem is they're buried within hundreds of these emails. So how do we filter this out? Well, like I say, we could do some sort of filtering system within Gmail. Uh, but again, we still need to respond to all these. So let's find a way of gate keeping all of these problems, making sure these never actually touch our inbox. Only these problems touch our inbox, but let's find a way of automating the responses to these as well. And the way we're going to do this is by using Chat IQ. So like I say, if you sign up to Chat IQ, you can essentially create what I'm calling a gatekeeper customer service agent chatbot that basically is able to just respond to these very, very simple requests and also deal with these complex issues. And the way it works is by collecting all of this information through a chatbot, dealing with uh, basically getting a brain to decide if it's a complex or a simple issue and then determining the best route for that. So if it's a very simple request, basic chatbot response. If it's a complex issue, we're going to need to gather a support ticket and get a human involved in this conversation. But I'm going to show you how you can also automate this as well so you don't need a human involved in the conversation. So if we sign up to chat IQ and we're going to create a, no, we're not, we're going to upload some data first. So basically what it allows us to do is create a knowledge base. And I did a video on this a while ago, but essentially a knowledge base is all of the information about our business in one place. Uh, so you can think of it as a funnel. For example, you've got top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. Uh, and basically what we need to think of it here is the information that somebody needs on your website and your blog is top of funnel stuff. But, you know, training documents, video transcripts, these sorts of things are bottom of funnel things. So typically these are complex issues. These are frequently asked questions. But the information to get answers to these problems are all over the place on different databases, different Word documents, different PDFs, different web pages and all sorts. So basically, we're going to take all of this information here. We're going to dump it into an AI brain, uh, which is going to be able to read this. You can see here, this is a screenshot, but 153,000 words from our entire company. So you can see here, if we go to URLs, it scraped every single page of our website. And by the way, this is this may seem complicated, but it's incredibly easy. You just put in your URL here and scrape your website uh, and it's done for you. So it's not actually that complicated at all. Uh, but you can see this is all of the data from our website. And basically the AI brain is able to read all this information and then respond to customers' questions using that information.
So for example, the example I gave here was how can I delete data in my data feed? So within chat IQ, you've got all of the data, right? So you want to make sure that you're able to, as a company, I want to make sure that my customers or my users are able to get answers to their questions and know how to use my software. So for example, if I ask the chatbot, this is a live chatbot that I've got set up in chat IQ. So if you sign up, you can use the same chatbot. Uh, how can I delete data in my data feed? This is an example of a simple request. This is something that is a commonly asked question. And it's going to tell me to go to my data feed, select the data I want to delete. Uh, once you select the data, you can click on the delete button to remove it from the data feed. So let's just demonstrate that. One, go to the data feed. We're in the data feed. Two, select the data. We're going to select the data. Three, select delete. So the AI is able to understand how to use this software. And the reason it's able to understand that is because of this knowledge base that I've given it. So not only is it able to decide, is it a simple or a complex issue, it's able to then respond to simple issues just with a simple chatbot response. And you can see just how quickly it did that. But let's say, for example, now I asked it a question uh, and it was a complicated question. So I've just done a live example here, right? I've asked the chatbot on the website, what is ChatIQ? And I'm just having a conversation with it now. I said, I have a cafe. How can ChatIQ help me? I have it on my website. And now it's starting to think this is a slightly more complicated problem. Uh, how can I get a refund? Definitely a complicated problem. And at these points, it's asking me, not only is it giving me the contact details, which you can add in, by the way, if you come to the chatbots, you can come to instructions and you can add in your contact details here. Um, it's also allowing me to submit a support ticket. And when I submit a support ticket, I can then categorize this. So I'm able to now make sure that I'm no longer getting you know, hundreds of questions coming in here. I'm getting all of these questions dealt with by a chatbot, but these complicated problems, these complicated issues are now also being handled with support tickets. So I can, as a customer, submit information saying I've got a problem with my account. I can put in the information, you know, my, my uh, email and my name, uh, and then I can say I need a refund or whatever my complex problem is. But it doesn't stop there because now I'm not going to do it, but I'll show you an example of one that I did. If I come back to Chat IQ and I come down to my ticketing section, uh, by the way, you can actually, if you come to your whatever chatbot you're using, you can turn ticketing on and off. Okay, so depending if you want ticketing on, you can turn it on. But if we come to the ticket section, I can now see all of the support tickets that I've received as a company. I can receive see uh, different names and emails. I can then actually categorize it by, I can look at different categories. So most of these are account level problems, but some of them people have bugs, some of them people have got questions or suggestions. And I can also look at the priorities. So it's going to prioritize them for me. Uh, I did an example here. I can't remember signing up for this product. Give me a refund. I don't want to dispute this payment. This is a high priority problem. I need to be able to respond to this problem very, very quickly. But again, it doesn't stop here because I can then reply to this and I can then use an AI to generate me a response. And it's not just gener generating me any random response, although that looked a bit odd. Let me just write an example here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tell an AI basically in just simple words, the problem that we have and how we're going to deal with it. So ask this customer for their email they signed up with so we can process a refund. We're going to send that to the AI and it's going to generate us a reply. But it's not going to generate us a reply just using what we've written here and just making the rest up. Although it is using that in its information, it says, uh, please provide us with the email address. It's actually now referencing this brain, right? And just so you guys remember, this brain here is this brain here and this brain is able to read the website the blog faq pages training documents and transcripts and everything so if somebody actually emailed in with a specific problem and i needed to know how to solve that problem for them i could just ask the ai here to look that information up in its knowledge base and then it can use it and draft us an email response i then just fill out the name here sebastian send an email send via Gmail. It's going to open up the default Gmail that I'm logged into on uh, my Chrome browser and it's pre-filled all the information in. So I just need to click send and I can then close this support ticket. So this is basically allowing us to scale our customer service. We're getting a lot less emails coming in to our email account. We're spending less money on time for our support team to manage these responses. We're able to actually gather useful information and useful data. We can see that most of our problems are account level issues. We do have some bugs with our software and a couple of other problems, but we're also able to deal with those high priority support tickets. We get notified when those support tickets come in, so we can select whichever chatbot we want. We can build multiple chatbots, by the way, and we can set up 
notification levels for different varying priorities. So when we're able to know when problems happen in our business at exactly what time, we're able to deal with those support tickets using an AI brain. So we don't need to actually respond to them ourselves. We can just confirm that the email is correct and then send it. Uh, and we're able to do this significantly quicker than we would if we were just collecting them all in our Gmail inbox. So that is how we uh, gather and scale our customer service as our business grows. Uh, and if you guys have got any additional questions at all, don't forget to leave them down below in the comments. Uh, like I said, you can get started for free. You can start a free trial. Just head to chatiq.ai. The link is down below in the description. Uh, start a free trial. You get two weeks to start a free trial. Put in your card details, sign up for a free trial. Uh, and then after that, it's $30 a month to automate your customer service. So that saves you thousands of dollars. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.